The head of the CIA says Vladimir Putin is now hoping to grind down Ukraine militarily, having narrowed his strategic aims in the war. William Burns says there's no intelligence that President Putin is unstable or in bad health. There's been unconfirmed speculation that the Russian leader who turned 70 this year may be ill. Here's our security correspondent, Gordon Carrara. Vladimir Putin was wrong in his assumptions about Ukraine's ability to resist invasion and Western support for it before the war, and he's just as wrong now, the CIA director told the Aspen Security Forum. Come on! He insists that Ukraine is not a real country. Real countries fight back, and that's what the Ukrainians have done, William Burns said. A Ukraine that they judged to be weak and divided that would fold quickly, a Russian military modernized to the point where they could win, in his view, a quick and decisive victory at minimal cost, European leaders whom he saw to be distracted by their own political transitions and the French elections that were coming up in the spring and risk averse, and he believed he had built a sanctions-proof economy with a big war chest of hard currency reserves. He said there was no sign the Russian leader was in bad health or mentally unstable, but he had been stewing in what the CIA director called a combustible mix of grievance, ambition and insecurity. Mr Burns also said China had been cautious about providing military support to Russia, its leadership unsettled by the initial military failings in Ukraine. But, he said, Beijing was seeking to learn lessons for its own ambitions of retaking Taiwan, one being that any invasion would require overwhelming force. Gordon Carrera, BBC News. Next tonight, the latest from Ukraine and the fierce battle for control of the southern city of Kherson. It was one of the first places seized by the invading Russian forces, but the Ukrainian army is launching a counteroffensive. That means any remaining civilians must get out or face being used as human shields. And as our senior international correspondent John Irvine reports from near Kherson, they are fleeing any way they can. It's a long ride to freedom and hundreds of Ukrainians have liberated themselves by using these bicycles to flee Russian-held territory and reach free Ukraine. They continue to pile up, a testament to the yearning of people who have endured Russian oppression to throw off that yoke. Many have the equivalent of white flags tied to their handlebars, for the journey is perilous. And these are people actually making that journey. They've taken to the only road that offers them the possibility of making it to free Ukraine. They pass cratered fields. They have to do this the hard way because Russian soldiers have stolen their cars. They ride bicycles or trudge on foot. They look exhausted but have to keep going. Their government wants them to flee the Kherson region because the Ukrainian army is planning a counterattack. The Russians try to prevent their escape so they can be used as human shields. These are bicycles used by the most recent arrivals and this is the road they came down. Where I'm standing is the equivalent of Checkpoint Charlie. People trying to flee Russian-occupied Kherson know they've reached freedom when they get to this point. This man is one of those who peddled out of Russian-occupied territory. You must have been frightened. <sighs> of course, it was a frightening journey, he said. Nobody wants to be shot in the back. What was it like living under Russian occupation? Some of the soldiers were normal, some were animals. They would get drunk and drive through the streets, shooting and throwing grenades into houses. Girls were raped. They went hunting for victims. To describe the extent of it would take all day. This video shows the lengths the Russians are prepared to go to to stop some of the bids for freedom. These drone pictures were shot by a Ukrainian army intelligence unit. It's a tough watch for the soldier operating the drone. It touches my soul, he told me. Many of these people are elderly. I want to give them all the help I can, but I can't. 
any intervention would get us all killed, but it's very hard to stand idly by and watch them walk or sometimes crawl. Inside occupied Kherson, Ukrainians hoping for liberation continue to protest and confront Russian soldiers. At the same time, others liberate themselves by escaping. The will to live a life of freedom again is so strong they can endure being reduced to human livestock to get there. John Arvine, ITV News, Southern Ukraine. Meanwhile, the head of the UK's secret intelligence service, MI6, says Russian forces are about to run out of steam in Ukraine. Speaking today, Richard Moore said it would give Ukraine a chance to strike back. Well, our global security editor, Rohit Kachu, is joining us in the studio with more on this. So, Rohit, what is MI6's assessment of the situation? Well, this is really rare to hear an intelligence assessment shared in this nature with the key detail on a stage in the United States in front of uh, uh, cameras over there. And what he's saying is that because Russia is struggling to get weapons and people to the front line, they will may well be forced in the coming weeks into some sort of state of operational pause. This assessment came from the man who is known simply as C, the chief of MI6, and here's what he said in Aspen earlier on. And I think they're about to run out of steam. I think our assessment is that the Russians will increasingly find it difficult to supply manpower, materiel over the next few weeks. They will have to pause in some way. Uh, and that will give the Ukrainians opportunities to strike back. So he's not talking there about, you know, some sort of push towards victory in the coming weeks for the Ukrainians. But he's saying that there is an opportunity to push back in some parts of Ukraine against the advancing Russian forces. Now, he addressed one other thing. We've heard all sort of speculation over the last few months about the health of the Russian leader, Vladimir Putin. All sorts of rumours, particularly online, saying that he's suffering from a terminal illness. Well, crucially, for the first time today, uh, the MI6 boss went on record and said that he, uh, along with the CIA, his uh, American counterparts see no evidence of his ill health whatsoever. Next, how Ukrainian refugees, past and present, were celebrated today at a special memorial in Cornwall. In 1948, a cross was put up in Myla Bridge by Ukrainians grateful for being given sanctuary during World War II. 75 years on, the cross has taken on an even more significance and today, in recognition, it was granted grade two list status. Those at the ceremony said it was a reminder of the importance of UK support, as our correspondent Rupert Evelyn reports. In a Cornish lane, a symbol of the spirit of human friendship and gratitude. A cross built by Ukrainian refugees fleeing Russian persecution in another era, but one with almost identical parallels to today. We are witnessing a surreal repetition of history. Gathering at the roadside, many of those who have recently found sanctuary here in Cornwall. Women and children thankful for a safe home, afraid for those they've left at home. I never was even can imagine that I will be a refugee. I had my best life in Ukraine. I had lots of friends, lots of plans. And now I'm standing here near the cross for refugee. And it's quite sad that like history coming back again. In 1948, a military camp became a refugee home for those fleeing Russian communism. Then, as now, they were welcomed here. I think people are most grateful to the to the whole country, to the people of Cornwall, you know, to the to the local population for for opening their homes, for opening their hearts, and that that has been 75 years ago. The same we see right now. Alina fled Kiev when the bombs landed near her flat. Just as Ukrainians found decades ago, she's thankful for the gift she's received here. They help us with, um, with anything, with mental health, with, with, um, with our life. Uh, uh, and um, thank you for all, really, thank you for all. The British government have given the cross listed status, a symbol protected, a reminder of the value of giving homes to those in danger. Rupert Evelyn, ITV News, Cornwall.